Hello Year 3 and welcome to your art video for today and today what we're going to carry on looking at is bodies okay we've been looking at bodies for well this is the second week now last week we looked at Julian OP okay and we created the outline of a person's body using felt tips I did one on Bethany on a scooter and today what we're going to do we are going to explore the artist Henry Moore okay so we're going to be thinking about interesting facts about him and then what I'd like you to do I'd like you to draw your own sculpture like Henry Moore but I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in a minute so let's find out a little bit about Henry Moore now this is a cartoon version of Henry Moore and you can see he's an older gentleman isn't he and he looks very smart he's there in his suit and he's with his shirt and his tie and um, yes that's Henry Moore let's find out a few facts about him so first of all Henry Moore was very famous for different sculptures and they resembled bodies, okay? Bodies in very strange positions, okay? He did use the site looking at individual pictures, individual sculptures, sorry, so just one person. And then he started going on to family sculptures, so more than one person in a sculpture. So a little bit uh, of detail and facts about Henry Moore. So Henry Moore, he was born in 1898 and he passed away in 1986. And it says there that he, he was British. Okay, so he was born in the British Isles. So it says here, Henry Moore is most famous for his bronze body sculptures. These are abstract. So it means you have to look at them at a different perspective. They don't necessarily show straight away what they are. But once you have a look at them, you can identify certain things. And it says showing emotions or shapes rather than being real. Lots of people think the wavy rolling shape in his sculptures are supposed to remind us of the landscape of Yorkshire, where Henry Moore grew up. And that's not too far away from us, is Yorkshire Year 3. Henry Moore began his artistic life by carving in clay and wood. So that's when he started do, using clay and wood when he was younger, and then he moved on to other things. At the age of 11, he was so impressed with what he'd learned about Michelangelo that he decided there and then to become sculpture and that is quite a moment that he's had there thinking that that I really enjoy Michelangelo so what I'm going to do I'm going to become a sculptor so he joined the army and he was fighting in the first world war but he got injured in a gas attack in 1917 and that can be really really dangerous year three and it says this awful experience of war stayed with him so he never forgot his experience of being in the in the army and being attacked in the First World War. When his mother died or passed away not long before his daughter was born, Henry Moore moved on to making family group sculptures. So more like this one at the bottom. And you can see it's made up of different shapes. And you can see that it identifies either a man or a lady or a family or whatnot. Henry Moore didn't spend much of his money on himself. What he used to do, he used to pay for others to be able to develop their art skills and their ideas to go with the art and he created something called the Henry Moore Foundation Charity and that is such an amazing thing for him to do rather than spending all his money on himself with clothes and a nice house and everything not saying that he didn't have a nice house he decided to invest his money in making other people's lives better how kind-hearted is that so now what we're going to do we're going to have a look at some of the sculptures that Henry Moore created so this one is called the three piece number three vertebrae working model. Now this is one of those abstract pieces you've got to look at. Now I don't necessarily know what this is showing. I can tell, I, I know it's a sculpture of some part of a body, but I'm not quite sure what. Maybe it's the hips that joins onto the vertebrae. I'm not sure, the vertebrae is the spine. But it's abstract. You can see that it's built up of different shapes, it's smooth, it's quite sharp on edges. You can see, oh, where's my mouse? You can see this side here is quite a sharp edge, but said this part here is quite smooth. This one is called cold unknown, and it's a person laying down on their side. And you can't tell whether it's a man or a woman. It looks like they're wearing a long dress or a tunic, but you can tell that this sculpture resembles a person, can't you? 
I'm not quite sure what it's made out of. It's gone like a greeny colour, unless it's painted that colour, but it could have turned that colour with the weather as well. So this one is called The Wall and it's a background for a sculpture. So the sculpture would then go onto this piece. A mother and a child. Now, it depends what angle you look at this one at. It's very um, abstract, like what he discussed. And you can see, I am think this is definitely an arm coming down. I'm thinking maybe that this is the child or well, maybe this is the child, I'm not too sure, but it's a very abstract piece of art. And this could be made out of a number of things. I'm thinking maybe like a stone or iron. Now there's this one. This is called large four piece reclining figure. Now another abstract piece. Now you can see that <laughs> it is very, very hard with these. This was made in 1973, by the way. And you can see that it's, is quite smooth but quite sharp on edges going round as well. Um, there's lots of different pieces. It's not just one sculpture. It looks like there's there's numerous pieces sculpted together. Now this one is a little bit more obvious. It looks like some women they're in nice dresses and there's three of them. This one looks like she's got a bun in her hair. And this one looks like it's made out of a stone or maybe a marble. Um, Looks like they're all looking into the distance at something. I'm not quite sure what, but you can see it's not um, how you'd imagine a woman to look at if you looked at a lady or a woman, um, but you can see it's built up of different shapes. The king and queen, there we go. That's the one we saw earlier, isn't it? And you can see the, the king, I'm presuming, head, and you can see the different shapes put together. They've missed a hole for the eye. Same with the queen. I'm presuming these are almost like crowns because the queen's got something slightly different. And the, the king's got quite smooth claws, but you can see on the queen's skirt or dress, it's quite rigid, quite bumpy to add that little bit of effect. And the feet look very, very good actually. They're not very abstract, those feet, are they? So body stockings, and that's what it's called, okay. So what can you see? What can you not see? What has happened to the body shape? How can children in the tube be made to look happy or sad? Now, what can you see in one of these pictures? Well, you can see that it's quite smooth, can't you? But it also does have some quite rigid and bumpy parts. It's made up of shapes. Um, they are, they, both the king and the queen are quite similar, but also they're very different as well, aren't they? But they're made up of the same materials. So what can you not see? Well. You can't see definitely that it's a man or a lady. You can't see their mouths. You can't actually see their face shape, can you? Because it's made up of quite flat material. And um, you can't see the throne, can you? It just looks like they sat on a bench there. What has happened to the body shape? Well, it looks almost as though the body shape has been squidged together using the different shapes like Henry Moore uses. Um, and you can, you can still tell that there's, there's arms and there's feet and there's a head and there's the hips and whatnot, but it's, it's very, very tight and very compact, isn't it? And then it says, how can the children in the tube be made to look happy or sad? Now, I'm not quite sure what, what children in the tube. It doesn't show the children in the tube, does it? Never mind. So it says here, which picture best describes your learning today? And why? Now, this is up to you. This is your own opinion, okay? And there's no right or wrong answer. But looking at these three images, which one do you think best matches your learning today on how the body or the sculptures might be um, positioned, so to say? So there's, it looks like, oh, there's my mouse. It looks like there's a man here with his hands over his head. There's a lady here. But this is a headshot, isn't it? We weren't really focusing on heads today. And then it looks like there's a child that's kind of scrunched up. Which one matches your learning today and why? Once you've done that, you can write this down and describe picture A, B or C, which matches your learning today. Once you've done that, um, carry on watching the video and I'll show you what we're going to be looking at today. Okay, superstar, see you in a second. 
Right, so I have my trusty whiteboard back and I am going to draw, 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 draw a picture kind of like what Hemimore created as a sculpture. Now I'm going to use the black felt tips so that you can see it really clearly. You shouldn't be using felt tips to draw, it's best to use a pencil because you can always rub out them if you want to change it. You could always go around the outline afterwards though with um, a darker pen, a felt tip, a bar or whatever, whatever you've got to hand. So I'm going to think about this image here and there's this girl and she's hunched over isn't she? She looks quite sad. So what I'm going to do, and remember it's abstract, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to draw a shape like that, quite a curved line. I hope you can see that. I'll go over it again. Draw quite a curved line and this is going to be the girl's back. Now, you can't see where her bottom would be, can you? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw a curve and it's going straight up. Okay, so that's her back and that's her bottom. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line straight down and that's going to be part of her legs like here. And I'm going to draw another line straight down and then I'm just going to do a curve for her foot. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw an arm, like a curve like that. Remember, it does not have to be perfect. And then I'm going to just rest her arms on, and her hands on her knee, just like that. Then I'm going to go around and I'm going to draw her head. Now remember it had that, um, it looks like almost like a hood over the top, doesn't it? <coughs> So I'm going to draw that and I'm going to blend it in with her arm, kind of like that. Now, you don't necessarily need to draw the same picture as me. You might want to draw your own um, complete different sculpture. I just did that one because it was to hand. Then what you can do, you can choose a colour. Sorry, I'm just trying to get my pencil colours out. And you can colour it in. Now, I don't want pinks. I don't want purples because we didn't see any pinks or purple sculpture, did, you? did we? You could use a nice brown. You could use a light grey. got a dark grey here. There's blacks. There's all sorts. So I'm going to use a light brown and I'm just going to shade it in. Okay? So just shade it in like that. I'll come back to you in a second once I've done it. Right, so now you can see that I've shaded in my sculpture and I went for a brown so it looked like almost like the wood effect. So what I'm going to do about it now, I'm going to almost spider diagram different facts about Henry Moore. So what I'll do, I'll go back to that fact page. There we go. And we can write lots of different facts about him. I would like at least six, okay? So I'm going to write Henry Moore. And he was born in 1898 to, and um, the two means he passed away, doesn't he? So 1986, okay. He was British. And I'm not going to do all of it because I know that if I write them all, that you might write the same facts and I want to see all those amazing different facts that you can think of. So what you can do, a minimum of six, please. You can do as many as you want, but no less than six. Write them all around your sculpture. And once you're done, take a photo to me, my catchy slogan now, and send it to me on Class Door Jar. Good luck. I hope you have a fabulous time creating your different sculptures. Maybe if you've got a little bit of extra time, you could create your sculptures out of, say, Play-Doh or clay if you've got any at home. Good luck and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.